In the previous lecture, we discussed the force voltage analogy. Now in this presentation, we are going to discuss the force current analogy. So let's get started. In force voltage analogy, we assume the voltage of electrical network to be analogous with the force of mechanical systems. In the same way, in case of force current analogy, we assume the current of electrical network to be analogous with the force of mechanical system. So let us consider the same mechanical system that we discussed in the previous lecture, in which we are having a mass M which is connected with a spring from one side and the spring is connected with a fixed support from the other side. There is a friction between the mass M and the fixed support and this friction is represented by a dash pot having the coefficient of viscous friction equal to B. A force F of T is applied on mass M towards the right hand side and there is a displacement X of T towards the right hand side. Now we know that the applied force is F of T and there are three opposing forces. The first force is the force due to acceleration which is M multiplied with A. The second force is the force due to friction which is equal to B multiplied with V. And the third force is the restoring force of spring which is equal to K multiplied with XT. And we all know that if we apply the Newton's law of motion for this mechanical system, then the sum of all the applied forces will be equal to sum of all the opposing forces. This is what we discussed in the previous lecture. Now we can rewrite this equation as F of t equal to m multiplied with d squared x of t over dt square plus b multiplied with dx over dt plus k multiplied with xt. And if we apply Laplace transform in this equation, we will have f of s equal to m multiplied with s square x of s plus b multiplied with s x of s plus k multiplied with x of s. And this is the same equilibrium equation that we discussed in the previous lecture. Now, in order to establish the force current analogy, we will consider an electrical network. So let us consider this network, which is a parallel RLC network. And we can see that we are having a current source. In force current analogy, the force in the mechanical system is replaced with a current source. Now, if the current in this current source is I, then it will be divided in these three elements. Let us suppose the current through this resistor is IR, the current through this inductor is IL, and the current through this capacitor is IC. Now, if we apply Kirchhoff's current law, that is KCL at this node, we will have I equal to IR plus IL plus IC, where I is the total current, IR is the current through this resistor, IL is the current through this inductor, and IC is the current through this capacitor. According to Kirchhoff's current law, the total current entering into a node is equal to the total current moving out of the node. Now we can see that these elements are connected in parallel and hence the voltage across all the elements will be equal. Let us consider the voltage across these elements equal to V. So in this way, we can rewrite the current across these three elements in terms of voltage V. The current across this resistor will be V over R. The current across this inductor will be 1 over L integral V dt. And the current across this capacitor will be C multiplied with dV over dt. So in this way, we can rewrite this equation as I equal to V over R, which is the current across this resistor, plus 1 over L integral V dt, which is the current across this inductor, plus C multiplied with dV over dt, which is IC, which is the current across this capacitor. Now, if we apply Laplace transform in this equation, we will have Is equal to Vs over R plus 1 over L multiplied with Vs over S plus Cs multiplied with Vs, where Is is the Laplace transform of I, Vs is the Laplace transform of voltage V, Vs over S is the Laplace transform of integral V dt, and Svs is the Laplace transform of dV over dt. And this is the equilibrium equation for this electrical network. But at this point of time, we cannot compare this equilibrium equation with this equation of mechanical system. These two equations are not comparable and this is because if we observe this equation, it is having decreasing powers of S. In this term, the power of S is equal to 2. In this term, the power of S is equal to 1. 
and in this term the power of s is equal to 0. But if we observe this equation, it is not having decreasing powers of s. So we have to rearrange this equation in order to make this equation comparable with this equilibrium equation. And for that sake, we will use this equation of Faraday law, which is V equal to d phi over dt. According to Faraday's law, the voltage is the rate of change of flux with respect to time. Now, if we take Laplace transform in this equation, we will have Vs equal to S multiplied with phi of S, where S phi of S is the Laplace transform of d phi over dt and Vs is the Laplace transform of V. Now, if we replace Vs with S phi of S in this equation, we will have Is equal to C multiplied with S square phi of S plus 1 over S multiplied with S phi of S plus phi of S over L. We will get this equation if we replace Vs with S phi of S in this equation. And this is the equilibrium equation for this electrical network. And we can now compare this equation with this equation. So in case of force current analogy, the force in the mechanical system is assumed to be analogous with the current of electrical network. Now let us compare the right hand sides of these two equations. So if we compare the coefficient of s squared which is m multiplied with x of s with the coefficient of s squared in the electrical network which is c multiplied with phi of s, we can see that the mass in the mechanical system is analogous with the capacitance in the electrical network. Phi s which is the Laplace equivalent of flux is analogous with x of s which is the Laplace equivalent of displacement. In the same way, if we compare the coefficient of s which is b x of s with the coefficient of s in the electrical domain which is 1 over r multiplied with phi of s, we can see that the reciprocal of resistance is analogous with the coefficient of viscous friction. And similarly, if we compare these two terms, we can see that the reciprocal of inductance is analogous with the spring constant k. So in this way, we have derived all the analogous terms by applying the force current analogy. And we can say that this network is the electrical analogous of this mechanical system. I hope you got this. Let us now move on to draw the conclusions of force current analogy. So moving on to the conclusions of force current analogy and for that sake let us draw a table in which we will have the terms of translational mechanical systems in this column and equivalent electrical analogous terms in this column. So in the previous section we compared the equilibrium equation of mechanical system to that of the equation of electrical network and we know the force in translational mechanical system is analogous to the current in electrical network and that's why we call it a force current analogy. In the same way, we derive the other analogous terms and we know the mass in translational mechanical systems is analogous with the capacitance of electrical network. Similarly, the frictional constant B of translational mechanical systems is analogous with reciprocal of resistance of electrical network. In the same way, the spring constant of translational mechanical systems is analogous with the reciprocal of inductance in case of electrical network. In the same way, displacement in translational mechanical systems is analogous with the flux of electrical network. Let me tell you that the flux is the number of electric field lines passing through a surface in an electrical network. You will find this term in electromagnetic theory. Moving on, the velocity in translational mechanical system is analogous with the voltage of electrical network. So in this way, we have defined all the terms of translational mechanical systems in terms of their analogous electrical network. Now we already know the analogy between the translational mechanical systems and the rotational mechanical systems. That is, we already know the force in translational mechanical systems is the torque in rotational mechanical systems. So in case of force current analogy, when the current is assumed to be analogous with the force in translational mechanical systems, we can define a torque current analogy in which the torque in rotational mechanical systems can be assumed to be analogous with the current in electrical network. 
So in the same way, we can derive all the terms of rotational mechanical systems in terms of their analogous electrical terms. The mass in translational mechanical systems is the moment of inertia in rotational mechanical systems. So we can say that the moment of inertia in rotational mechanical systems is analogous with the capacitance of electrical network. Similarly, frictional constant in translational mechanical systems is the torsional frictional constant in rotational mechanical systems. So we can say that the torsional frictional constant is analogous with the reciprocal of resistance in electrical network. Similarly, the spring constant in translational mechanical systems is the torsional spring constant in rotational mechanical systems. So, in torque current analogy, the torsional spring constant will be analogous with the reciprocal of inductance. Moving on, the displacement in translational mechanical systems is the angular displacement in rotational mechanical systems. So, if we define a torque current analogy, the angular displacement will be analogous with the flux in the electrical network. And lastly, the velocity in translational mechanical systems is the angular velocity in rotational mechanical systems. So, the angular velocity will be analogous with the voltage of electrical network. So, in this way, we have defined all the terms of rotational mechanical systems with their analogous terms of electrical network. We are now done with force current analogy and torque current analogy. This is a very important table. We will use this table while doing the problems based on force current analogy or torque current analogy. So, I want you all to write this table on your notes. So, I hope you understood the force voltage analogy and the force current analogy. We will now discuss some problems based on force voltage analogy and the force current analogy. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.